Let's try this again. Welcome to the Mesa City Council meeting for January 25th. Uh, we'll begin this meeting with an invocation by practitioner William A. Hewitt from the Christian Science Faith, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Scout Seth Beeman. So please stand and uh, join me in the invocation and pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, we, thy loving children, are the gathered here this evening in your name to do thy will for all of those whom you have given to us the opportunity to represent for the many decisions that must be made. Through your understanding, your wisdom, your enlightenment to us, and for your love to each of us and our neighbors, we are truly grateful. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Hewitt, and thank you, Seth, for getting our meeting off to a good start. Uh, the first item on our agenda for today is to consider the items on the consent agenda. So I'd invite Mr. Kevin Christopher to come forward to read the consent agenda. Mr. Christopher. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a council member or a citizen request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. If a citizen wants an item removed, a blue card must be completed and given to the city clerk prior to the council's vote on the consent agenda. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, act on a three-year term contract for pre-sort mail services for the business services department. Item 3B, act on one-year renewal contract for commercial printing for the Business Services Department. Item 3C, act on one-year term contract for meals for the Police Department holding facility. Item 3D, act on three-year term contract for an upgrade, service, and repairs for two thermal imaging systems for the Police Department. Item 3E, act on three-year renewal of the term contract for dust stabilization for the Environmental Management and Sustainability Department. Item 3F, act on three-year term contract for playground and park equipment for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 3G, act on three-year term contract for bus shelter maintenance and repair services for transit services. Item 4A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the U.S. Marshal Service to accept funding for the reimbursement of police personnel overtime expenses in the violent offender unit relating to a joint law enforcement operations task force. Item 4B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to accept funds made available through a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Arizona Cotton Research and Protection Council for the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Item 5A, act on recommendation from the Audit, Finance, and Enterprise Committee to accept the city's comprehensive annual financial report for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2015. Item 6A, introduction of ordinance regarding Z15-045, the 10,000 to 11,000 block of East Guadalupe Road, located west of Signal Butte Road on the north side of Guadalupe. This request will allow for the reduction of the required minimum garage width for lots within Mulberry, parcels 2 and 3. Item 6B, introduction of an ordinance to acknowledge receipt of the report and recommendations of the Independent Compensation Commission for elected officials and to increase the compensation for the offices of mayor and city council as recommended by the commission by amending ordinance 5196. Item 7A, act on ordinance amending section 10-3-13 of the Mesa City Code pertaining to traffic control devices within the city limits to add flashing yellow arrows as a traffic control signal legend as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Board. Item 7B, act on ordinance amending section Sections 10-4-3 and 10-4-4 of the Mesa City Code to increase speed limits from 40, from 40 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour on a portion of Signal Butte Road from Baseline Road to Guadalupe Road as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Board. Item 7C, Act on Ordinance regarding Z15-040, 205 East McKellops Road located on the south side of McKellops Road and west of Mesa Drive. Rezone and site plan review to allow for development of a large vehicle rental facility, mini storage facility, and outdoor RV and boat storage. Item 7D, act on ordinance regarding Z15-038, 1126 West Medina Avenue and 2345 and 2355 South Amiskel Road, located south of Baseline Road and the east side of Amiskel Road. 
rezone and site plan modification to allow for development of a small lot single residence subdivision. And item 7E, act on ordinance regarding Z15-034, 412 North McDonald, located north of University Drive and east of Country Club Drive. This is a rezone to allow for historic landmark designation. Mayor and council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, are there any requests to speak on anything on the consent agenda? No request, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's been a motion made by Vice Mayor Kavanaugh, seconded by Councilmember Luna. Please cast your vote. Uh, the vote is unanimous in favor of the consent agenda. The next item on our agenda is item 8A. Uh, and actually, then, this is to conduct a, a public hearing on these items. But it's, I, I, we're going to consider items 8A and 8B together because they are essentially the same item. But item 8A is to take action on ordinance Z15-41 for prop property located at 2600 East Southern for for a rezoning from RS-43 to OC and site plan review. This request will allow for the development of a banquet and conference center. Item 8B is to take action on a resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a development agreement with Shelley and Michael McCown to facilitate the development of a banquet and conference center and associated outdoor activities with and entertainment for the property located at 2600 East Southern Avenue. Councilmember Finter has previously declared a conflict on this item. Uh, Council, is there any discussion? Oh, Ms. Mickelson, do we have any requests to speak on this item? No request, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Council, any discussion on this item? If not, I would entertain a motion. A motion has been made by the, the Vice Mayor, count, uh, seconded by Council Member Thompson. Please cast your vote. The vote is uh, seven in favor with Council Member uh, Finter abstaining. So uh, that was item. Oh, I'm sorry, six in favor and council member uh, Finter abstaining. So uh, the public hearing was on both items 8A and 8B, but I think the vote was only on 8A. Is that correct? What, uh, just, just to, to be clear, clear, why don't we do that was on 8A and we'll do 8B. Okay. Or yeah, these are separate items and I didn't make it clear we were voting on both, although I said we were going to have the public hearing on both. So the vote was for item 8A. I'd now entertain another motion for item 8B. It's been motioned by the Vice Mayor and seconded by Councilmember Glover. Please cast your vote. Again, the, uh, the vote is six in favor with Councilmember Finter abstaining. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 9A. This is to take action on, on Ordinance Z15-39 for property located at 2200 through 2300 blocks of East Yacento Avenue for rezoning from LC to RM3 PAD in site plan review. This request will allow for the development of a multi-residence project. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, I noticed that I have two blue cards. Anything else on this? Nothing additional, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. So, I'm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll invite you forward to speak on this item. Uh, you'll have three minutes to, uh, to share whatever your thoughts are about this item. Uh, the first card I have is from Rodney Cole. Mr. Cole, I know it's uh, somewhat redundant. We now all know your name, but just for the record, would you please take <coughs> your name and your address, and then you'll yes. have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank My you. name is Rodney Cole. I live at 1864 South Briar Circle here in Mesa. And uh, I was here a few weeks ago and spoke then as well, and I was an honor to be before you at that time as well. I'd like to just um, make a few. Uh, I'm, I had the, the privilege of meeting this week with Mr. Welker and Mr. Woods for the building project, and that was nice that they took the time to meet with me. I want to kind of go on record at this point. Um, we, I, we just re addressed the issue of privacy. My home is the closest home to the, the proposed condo being built. And the way my home is situated, my backyard abuts the street so that the, the windows of the condos have a clear access or view into my backyard. And uh, they addressed with me the things that they're going to do to um, be aware of my privacy concern awnings in the windows, and also the landscaping, which will, should eventually grow to a point that it might cost uh, me some privacy. And uh, that's good. They also mentioned, though they couldn't promise it, that there was a consideration of louvers being put in the windows that, uh, that face the street that would also restrict, a little bit restrict the view of the people from, from uh, those condos looking down into my yard. And uh, I just want that to go on the record as <clears throat> we've had that conversation, and, and uh, I appreciate their considerations to me. And uh, also, um, I'm not sure exactly how the Mesa 
MESA ordinances read, but I looked under the Phoenix ordinances, and I see here that under Ordinance 3 on Section uh, 609, uh, under Building Code, it says that uh, these are some of the specific policies for the use of residential land. And one, number three, is to ensure the compatibility of any housing development with an, that of adjacent development. And I'm sure it's been taken into consideration that our homes being single-story single residences, a three-story residence that's within 83 feet of that is uh, really not in, it doesn't really match the existing homes. Um, I thought, uh, I suggested to them at that meeting on Thursday night that they could reconsider and have their two-story units that they planned on building, three of those, closer to the residential properties so that it would not be that same wall effect uh, that we'll have with the three-story buildings close to the one-story. So I appreciate uh, your service to the community and that I had the time to express myself tonight. And I'm, a, I'm in favor of the project, just I have those concerns. So thank you so much. Mr. Brown, thank you for being here. We appreciate your, uh, your input. Next uh, individual that sub has submitted a card is Mr. Rodney Cole. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, David Brown. Yeah, Mr. You got Brown, my if we name. Can get your name and address. Thank yes, you uh, David Brown, um, 1845 South Rose Circle. Mayor Giles, Vice Mayor Kavanaugh, Council Members, Mr. Wesley, and City Staff, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak briefly uh, this evening in support of the proposed Jacinto Loss development. Although I often coordinate activities and dissemination of information for Ranch West, I appear tonight only as a 20-year resident of the community whose home is two down from the northern boundary of the development <clears throat> within clear sight, uh, a line of sight of the two and three story townhomes. Although a few of my neighbors have some heartfelt concerns, Jacinto Loss is the highest and best commercial use of this very, very challenging parcel of land, which has languished undeveloped since our homes and the adjacent shopping center Mesa Shores were built in the late 70s by then Estes Homes. Since that time, it has served as a dumping ground, a neighborhood landfill that has detracted from the neighborhood, which in fact is a gateway to the city from Gilbert. Instead of neighbors, commercial or residential, we have attracted dump trucks, ATVs, motorbikes, mud bogging trucks, pesticide vendors and litters of all kinds of rubbish, beer cans and wine bottles, shards of glass and plastic bottles. I know, I've cleaned them up for 20 years. We can do better by approving this well-designed space, correctly implemented to the vision of the architect and the developer, the city and the community, Jacinta loss will add to our home values, which were devastated during the Great Recession with market decreases exceeding 100%. We can do better. The new development will also strengthen an aging retail center, which lost its large Michael store a year ago to greener pastures just one mile west. We can do better. Jacinta loss will bring life to our community. 102 new families to shop in our stores, to walk to our basin, to enjoy Ranch West. People, not rodents and rubbish. I urge the council, weighing the disbenefits of the past against the promises of the future, to move forward with this. Let's all do better for the neighborhood and for Mesa. Thank you. Thank you for your, your thoughts, Mr. Brown. Um, no other requests to speak, is that right? That's correct, ma'am. Uh, now, it, it should be noted, uh, from, just to remind us all, that the site plan that's uh, subject to this vote uh, is different from the one that was originally uh, submitted when this was posted a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Wesley, could you uh, tell us what the, the modifications are to the site plan? Yes, Mayor and Council, based on uh, continued looking at the site plans and input from uh, the neighbors, we re-looked at how the parking was distributed on the site and the proposed use of the, some of the adjacent uh, parking in the commercial center. Uh, that caused a few concerns. The applicant has gone back and uh, redesigned the site to place all the required parking within the boundaries of the property. 
so it does not require uh, the adjacent parking at all. And uh, that's been the major change. Most of that parking is along the west and south sides uh, of the property. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Council, any discussion on this item? Mr. Richens. Yeah, at the introduction, I had voted against the introduction, and, and I just want to kind of walk you through that, why I did that. Is typically when we have some uh, issues that are unresolved issues between neighbors and developers, we, <clears throat> we would defer the introduction of an ordinance um, because if, if something gets negotiated that changes something, then we'd have to reintroduce it later. And it, it, the vote came up and, and, and was voted on rather quickly, and I didn't, I didn't have an opportunity to, exp to, to explain that. that. That's kind of what we had been doing in the past. And I know Jim uh, earlier this, uh, in our meeting downstairs explained the, the difference between site plans and, and introductions of zoning cases and how all that works. Uh, general public doesn't always understand that, so we usually had taken the time to, to step through that a little bit before we went forward with the introduction. So that was the, I don't have a material issue with the development. I think it's appropriately cited, and, and uh, I've been spending some time with Mr. Welker and, and understanding how the windows were situated and whether or not there were view windows that people could stand and look out at, at the neighbors and understand that they are not. And, and I appreciate the, uh, the parking considerations that have been. So I, I'll, I'll be supporting the ordinance at this time. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Mr. Cavanaugh. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this neighborhood became part of District 3 about four years ago. And since that time, I've <coughs> spent a lot of time working with Mr. Brown and his neighbors. And, uh, and city staff has done a wonderful job working to get Ranch West to be a registered neighborhood, uh, creating uh, methods of communication among neighbors, exploring lots of uh, opportunities for us to help improve the neighborhood. We had a very successful uh, a BSN uh, in the neighborhood in the past as well with great attendance from the neighborhood. And one of the items identified early on was this lot, which was a very challenging lot that was originally designed, I believe, for some additional, um, at that time, multiplex cinemas. And uh, uh, shortly after this was built, those went out of style in favor of the super cinema concept that you see one mile to the west. And, uh, and so uh, this lot had all the problems that that Mr. Brown identified, and it was, uh, it was truly a challenge. And I appreciate uh, the applicant coming forward, working with city staff, working with the neighbors, working with, with my office to help develop a project that would be certainly be an asset to the community. Uh, neighbors uh, were vocal with issues of concern uh, for us to, to work on, and I also want to commend our, uh, our transportation staff, which uh, listened to those concerns and worked on uh, restriping Jacinto to create a shared bike lane, parking lane, to create that visual <coughs> friction, if you will, to discourage uh, frequent, a lot of parking along Jacinto, working on uh, turn lanes. We're going to be monitoring, uh, depending on what happens uh, across the street, whether there will be a need for a future crosswalk uh, by, the, uh, by the park, the retention basin there. Uh, and they're going to be monitoring our, our traffic signaling both coming out onto baseline and onto Gilbert to see if any modifications need to be made. And, uh, and Council, just several months ago, you uh, approved a, uh, a grant that we received, a tribal grant, to help uh, make improvements at the uh, retention basin that's right across the street from this new development. And so I want to uh, applaud city staff, city departments, the applicant, and the neighbors for doing many, many things that uh, are working to improve the, the neighborhood here. And so. Um, I've made the motion to approve the, the zoning case with the amended uh, site plan that we received tonight. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cavanaugh. Council, any other discussion on this item? Okay, there's been a motion made by Vice Mayor Cavanaugh, seconded by Council Member Luna. Please cast your vote. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 10, items from citizens present. Ms. Mickelson, I note that we have one card. Is this the only one you've received? That's the only one. Okay. Thank you. All right. Looks like we have a few more, so we'll look at those in a moment. But for the, we'll proceed forward with uh, Heather Scandleberry. Heather, please come forward. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. You have uh, three minutes. Good evening. I'll try to talk fast then. It's not really my strong point, but here we go. First of all, I'm the owner of the property, the Phil Isley home that you just uh, designated as a historic landmark in the city of Mesa. So thank you for that. 
Um, I think Mr. Isley and the Isley home are well-deserving of the recognition, and I'm very happy that the history of the Isley family and their contributions to Mesa are now permanently preserved, as well as my story of saving this home from demolition and relocating it um, to a place in Mesa where it can hopefully thrive for many, you know, many years to come. Um, what I wanted to address to you is um, the problem, some of the problems that I've had with, with saving and preserving this home. Um, the things in the city code, um, well, let me start with, um, you're here because you wish to serve the citizens of Mesa, and I would challenge to you that um, that responsibility is to the citizens past, present, and future of Mesa um, to start. So in order to um, historically preserve this home, um, there are things in the city code uh, that don't serve to protect our history. Um, rather, they do just the opposite. They, they're really encouraged to destroy it. Um, just um, technically and uh, financially, you know, some of the obstacles that you have to overcome really um, don't advocate for historic preservation. And so uh, this is an opportunity. Um, historic preservation needs your advocacy. Um, and because I've dealt with the staff within the city and such, um, you are really the only advocates for historic preservation in the city, and as well as some residents of the city um, that work very hard. Um, but currently, I think the staff-wise in the city of Mesa, they're really lacking um, any staff that's knowledgeable or um, wishes to, to do things to you know, promote historic preservation and, and protect our history. I've had to abandon my project of renovating the Phil Isley home um, because of technical definitions and the application of codes that simply cannot be to conform to um, and s while trying to save the historic integrity of this home. Um, it presents a unique problem here and um, the process you know, largely discourages people from doing things within the law requesting permits. Um, and when you try to do things right, as I've done, um, you get stuck against so many obstacles that you either give up or you run out of money. And I'm on the verge of both. So um, that's why I thought I would come to speak to you tonight. Um, specifically, um, as far as this historic landmark uh, designation, one of the conditions was that um, I have to abide by the building codes from 2003, from when I moved this property, um, because that's the way the, the code is written, is that when you move a property, you have to abide by the current codes. Well, when you're talking about a building that's 90 plus years old, some of that's just completely impossible to do. Um, can, if you're really trying to save the integrity of, of the building. Um, and one other thing is the fire and life safety. Um, that kind of gives a, you know, when that term comes up, it kind of gives a carte blanche approach to some things that really, um, really can be unreasonably interpreted or just kind of make things impossible. And, and that's what's happened to me. Um, and I just want to read, I know my time's up, so I just want to read something to you. Um, that I think is appropriate here. Um, and this is a quote from Mr. Phil Isley himself, and um, perhaps some wisdom um, that was captured for this very moment. Right from Mr. Isley, from an article that was done in the Mesa Journal Tribune, July 14th, 1933. For the past 19 years, I have watched the development of Mesa, I am sorry to say that the old cooperative spirit Mesa had at the time I came does not exist today. Unless that old spirit returns to us and we get together once again as a solid working unit, some of our sister towns are going to annex our reputation for being one of the best little communities in the state. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> Unfortunately, because this isn't an item on our agenda, we can't respond or debate any of the issues that you brought forward. Uh, we do have a couple other requests to speak. Uh, Janice Genevois. Janice, thank you for coming forward. Thank you for your service on our Historic Preservation Board. Uh, please give us your name and your and your address, and we'll delight to hear from you for three minutes. Thank you. Um, could I hand this forward so that they have a copy? I 
I am Janice Genevoix. I reside at 150 North Wilbur, 85201, and I am the, um, the uh, chair of the Historic Preservation Board. And I and two board members have met with the mayor and the city manager to discuss the importance of the city of Mesa having a historic preservation officer. The city doesn't currently have the funding for a full-time position, but they liked our suggestion of using a contractor. Scottsdale does that. And we've made a written budget request for a position which we have submitted. I'm here this evening to bring to your attention the loss of historic in integrity that is now occurring at the previous site of the landmark restaurant. I have given you a certificate of appropriateness document and on it you can see that it did not say they could remove the historic sign. That box is not checked, but the sign is gone and it's probably in the dump. It did nowhere did that document give them the right to texture the building. It is now covered in stucco, the brick of the original historic building. And the, the, the stucco work was so done so shoddily that the stucco actually landed on all of the original wooden window casings, which will cause rotting of our original wood. This would never have happened if we had a historic preservation officer. And there was on that document there a change to wall design and entry feature, but it appears that they removed the original door and replaced it with a modern door on the front of the building. This building that was the landmark is on the National Register of Historic Places as well as Mesa Local Historic but it currently doesn't have any historic significance. A historic preservation, we are asking you to please make sure to set a line item budget to procure a historic preservation officer contract staff member so this does not continue to happen. The board is now working with John Wesley on how to fix what has happened to the landmark. The only way to prevent this from occurring again and again is to have a historic preservation officer. Too much is at stake not to listen to our request. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janice. And again, thank you for your service on the board. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have a Wendy Mack that's requested to speak. Hi, I am um, here on behalf of Wendy Mack, who just texted me. She was unable to make it. Okay. Um, but I have her speech. She resides at 2948 East Caballero Street, 85213. And this is regard regarding historic signs. The Mesa Preservation Foundation and the Mesa Historic Preservation Board have a high interest in saving historic signs along Main Street. Both entities are working to create a sign ordinance to protect and save what remains of Mesa's historic highway, now Main Street. Recently, the El Rancho Neon Historic Sign was damaged beyond repair. It was demolished because the city did not employ qualified individuals to save it. Every single day, people from all over the globe are calling the Buckhorn Baths to try to buy the Buckhorn Bath Sign privately. Meanwhile, the Bill Johnson Sign owner does not return our emails, our calls, and our letters. The Historic Preservation Board proposes and highly advises City Council that the City of Mesa create a historic neon sign park, a piece of land where we can put these these and light them up, these signs, or design a light rail stop with our historic signs. 
they're so important in preserving the history of Mesa. And now we've lost the landmark sign. How many signs are we going to lose? And what legacy will we have left? Please watch for our coming ordinance, our sign ordinance, and support us in this important endeavor. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and please thank Wendy for us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our items from citizens present, and that concludes the items on our agenda. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, we, we have three speakers, and, we, and I got three cards. So if you submitted another card, that's, that's uh, more than we, uh, we hear. So I'm sorry, but we'll be back again in a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll put you first on the agenda. Okay. Uh, so, uh, um, Council, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Uh -huh.